We've arrived at the daughter of the Prophet Zainab bint Muhammad. This is the daughter of the Prophet in Khadija al Khwailid, Khadija al Kubra, anha, one of the women of Jannah. And you know, one of the interesting things, as soon as we go into you know, her story, is that we see that the Prophet وسلم, before his revelation and after, he was thoroughly integrated in the society in which he lived. So we'll come to know who Umm Kulthum was engaged to, who Ruqayya was engaged to. And when you learn that, if you don't know already, it might come as a, how could the daughters of the Prophet وسلم, be engaged to the sons of that man? But the Prophet, he was a member of the community in which he lived. He, even though at that time, he was known for his, you know, trustworthiness. He was known for his love of zuhud and love of um, retreats. He still was a member of the society. So Zainab bint Muhammad, she was uh, married to a man named Abu al-As, who different Abu al-As and the Prophet وسلم, praised him for this. Two daughters of the Prophet I don't want to I don't want to give away the spoiler, but they were married to two people who after the Prophet وسلم, declared his prophecy, they were commanded to divorce the daughters of the Prophet وسلم, as a means of um, you know ostracizing them. Abu al-As refused. Right? And they said, Abu al-As, if you divorce Zainab bint Muhammad, we will marry you to any woman you want. And he said, I don't want another woman. I want my wife. And so he would not um, divorce um, his wife. And she did not leave him. The Prophet والسلام, even though, of course, she declared her Islam right after her mother declared her Islam. The Prophet ﷺ did not, you know, force her to leave her husband. Which is, I mean, just think about that, right? She was with Abu al-As at Mecca. The Prophet, even after the Hijrah, Zainab bint Muhammad, anha, she was still in Mecca with Abu al-As. She was Muslim and he wasn't. He actually went out to fight against the Muslims at Badr, and he was taken hostage. Now, really, really beautiful. Uh, this story is when she was getting married to Abu al-As her mother Khadija anha, had given her an onyx necklace an onyx is a, is, a, is a precious stone right it's like a diamond but it's usually darker in color had given her an onyx ne necklace uh, as her wedding gift and when Abu al-As was uh, captured by the Muslims and they were you know seeking proceeds for to, you know to get up money for his ransom Zainab bint Muhammad sent that necklace. Now what I find interesting about this is look at her integrity as a wife. She could say, and I think many of us would, well, you know, my father is, my husband got captured. I'll just, you know, make an appeal to my father, you know, and see if I can get this worked out. She was prepared to ransom, pay her husband's ransom as though she were anyone else. Right? Even though she was Muslim, even though she was the daughter of the Prophet So when the Prophet saw among the, the ghanima, the spoils, right, the money taken in due to the ransom, this necklace, he was frozen and he thought about Khadija, knowing that this had been given to his daughter from his wife, right, his late wife. He immediately sent the necklace back to his daughter, and he sent Abu al-As back. You go back to Mecca, don't worry about it. I'm sending you back on one condition. One condition and one condition only. That you send my daughter Zainab bint Muhammad to Medina so that she can be with the Muslims. That's the only thing that I'm asking you to do. And Abu al-As is, he agrees, right? He complies. The only thing, and this is where the story gets a bit Interesting. They get to Mecca and 
when uh, Kinana is bringing Zainab bin Muhammad out of Mecca, he's doing it in view of the Quraysh. And they take this as like an embarrassment. One of our men is having his wife taken and sent somewhere else. And one of them actually goaded the, the camel. And Zainab bin Muhammad was thrown from the camel and she miscarried. And she, and she, uh, you know, she ended up um, hurting herself. Order was restored and she made it to Medina and she lived you know, among the Muslims. After one of the Ghazawat, after one of the campaigns, after one of the, the battles, you know, Abu al-As, still not Muslim at this time, he entered her home in Medina asking her to give him protection. Right? This, is a, this is like, you know, if I were you know, more uh, you know, enterprising, I'd be thinking about making a movie about this, like make some money. You know, this is, a, this is a, a, you know, quite a, a, a story of love and iman. He enters her home asking her to give him uh, shelter, to give him protection. So that next morning, they go out for Salat al-Fajr, Salat al-Subh. She says, I give shelter to Abu al-As. The Prophet ﷺ hears this and he says, we give shelter to whomever she gives shelter. Kind of like, her word is my word. This was kind of her relationship with the Prophet ﷺ. Abu al-As does not become Muslim then, but he goes back to Mecca, he becomes Muslim. He rejoins his wife, and the Prophet ﷺ never held against him anything that happened in the past. In fact, the Prophet praised him for knowing the virtue of Zainab bint Muhammad, knowing the virtue of his daughter, and not allowing anything to separate him from his wife, and they ended up back together. So, you know, this story is illustrative, you know, of many things. You know, one of them is that even the Prophet Sallallahu had to deal with like real situations, right? He receives wahi. His daughter was married to someone unwilling to commit to Islam. And sometimes we look at our family situations and when they are less than ideal, we're like, why, do, why me? Why couldn't my son be perfect? Why couldn't my daughter be perfect? Why couldn't my situation be perfect? Why couldn't... The Prophet ﷺ had a daughter that was a believing woman, married to someone who wasn't. And he had to manage that. Right? He had to deal with that very gently, very delicately. And through his you know, gentle and delicate dealing, in the end, everything ended well. And you know, perhaps uh, to, to, to punctuate you know, this you know, brief you know, biographical you know, vignette, um, when uh, uh, Zainab passed, the Prophet ﷺ asked if there was anyone pure among the companions and he went with the person he selected into her grave and stayed there for a moment. Right? The Prophet ﷺ had a deep and very special and very personal relationship with his children. And we have to remember, he was only survived by Fatima. And she passed shortly after, but all of his other children died before he did. All of them passed before him. So he had experienced great um, you know, personal loss. And he stayed there with her until the Rahmah descended and her being shown mercy was affirmed. So as a father, he was there for his daughter and he cared for her, not until the earthly end, but until the heavenly end. Not until the Rahmah descends am I leaving my child. That's the Prophet ﷺ, and that was his relationship with Zainab bin Muhammad.